Welcome in Karibuni to Aroma of Zanzibar Eid collaboration and this week we bring you a variety of cakes. I bring you Battenberg cake. Farhat Yami will be sharing her cardamom sponge cake and Shuna's Kitchen will be sharing her wonderful dandy cake. Now the recipe I'm using calls for self-raising flour. So if you don't have one, you can make one at home. I'm using one cup of all-purpose flour and we're going to add one and a half teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just mix it well to combine and that is how you make your own self-raising flour at home. Now for this recipe, I'll be using one and a half cups of self-raising flour. So we're just gonna sift that well. And I'm ready to prepare my pan. I'm gonna be using nine by nine inch pan, just greasing it with some shortening. And um, I'm going to divide this into two so that way I can bake both the flavors in one pan. So I've got uh, aluminum foil there that I have uh, got it on the same size as the pan, nine by nine, nine inch. And on top of that, I put the parchment paper. Now, if you don't have a nine by nine inch, if you, you can use a loaf, uh, you know, the loaf pan, you can use that one as well. So I'm going to start with my butter. I'm using three fourth cup of uh, soft butter, room temperature, and we're just gonna break it down and then add three fourth cup of sugar, white granulated sugar. And we're just gonna mix this well until it's light and fluffy. That should take about five to seven minutes. And this is what we're looking for. But before we add the eggs, we're just gonna scrape the bowl to make sure that everything is well combined. And then we're gonna add one egg at a time. I'm using three eggs. A large size and you're gonna add one egg and you mix it until you don't see the yellow no more then you add the next egg and the next egg right so we use three eggs once that's done add the vanilla one and a half teaspoon of vanilla and now we are ready to fold in the flour now this is not a traditional Battenberg Usually it has uh, almond flour, but I wanted to make things simple for you guys. So we start with a flour, just a little at a time, maybe two, three portions. I'm not measuring, I'm just uh, adding and we're just gonna fold it and mix. All right. You just want to mix it well. Once that's done, you're going to divide this into two portions equally. And one portion is going to go on one side, our vanilla. Now, you don't have to do vanilla and chocolate. You can do whatever flavors that you like, or you can do any colors that you like. You're just going to spread it well. And our oven is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I added quarter cup of cocoa powder and a bit of cinnamon. I love cinnamon with my cocoa powder. And we just sifted it and added one tablespoon of sugar and two tablespoons of milk. Okay, just to thin it out because you don't want your, your cake to be very dense. So we're just gonna mix that well and then put it on the other side of the, uh, of the pan. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it well. And then after that, you're just gonna tap your pan twice or thrice to release any air bubbles. So while that's baking, we are going to prepare our ganache. So I've got some simmering water over there and we're gonna put the bowl. You wanna make sure that the water does not touch the bowl, all right? And then you're just gonna keep stirring until all the chocolate is melted. You can use microwave too for that purpose. So our chocolate is melted and uh, I've used two cups of chocolate and I'm using one cup of heavy cream. If you don't want to use heavy cream, you can use regular milk and uh, we warmed it up. You don't want to boil it. You just want to keep it warm, maybe almost to a boil, but it's not necessary since the chocolate is already melted. And we're just going to mix it, continue mixing it. Now, if you're going to use the milk, you can use about half a cup of milk to get this kind of consist consistency. 
all right so we're just gonna keep uh, stirring and mixing and then i added one tablespoon of butter which is optional to give that beautiful shine since the milk is warm and the chocolate is still warm the butter will melt and then after that just cover it and keep it in the fridge until it thickens or until when you're ready to use it so now our cakes are ready and they have cooled so we're just going to remove them from the pan all right and um, now for the inside or middle you can use i'm using apricot jam you can use buttercream you can use ganache you can use any type of uh, uh, jam that you like all right so we're just going to level this well there's a little bit of vanilla there that's not properly mixed and i'm going to put that right on top so that way i can trim it you know uh equally i mean so that I, you know, I don't have uh, issues that one is big and one is small. Okay, so we're just gonna um, trim all the sides. If you can, uh, please keep this cake in the fridge before you do this. I was kind of uh, rushing, so I didn't keep it in the fridge. So it's really, really crumbly. It's really, you know, it's really soft and buttery. So you want to keep it in the fridge before you work with it. You see? Mine is kind of uh, chipped off. And this side as well. You can use any type of uh, your favorite uh, recipe. If you, if you have, you don't have to use this recipe. I'm just going to remove that part as well. It means my cake will be small. All right. And then we're going to make two portions or before that so i've just warmed up my uh, apricot jam so that it's spreadable this is going to bind the cake so you want to make sure that you you do put something in between and on the sides as well you're going to put it on top and everywhere this is a beautiful cake i love it I would love, I would have loved to share the um, the almond and pistachio, but uh, maybe next to it, inshallah. Okay, so we're just going to cut it right in the middle. It looked okay to me. You know, sometimes I can't see, I feel it's all right until when I see the pictures and I realize how crooked it is. So right now I kept it in the fridge for a couple of minutes. So here's my ganache. And I don't think this was a smart idea for me to put the ganache at the bottom. Uh, this is the first time I'm using ganache. Yeah, by the way, this cake, uh, you usually cover it with mazepan, or you can use a fondant, you can use buttercream. And I wanted to try ganache this time. And I just put it on top of it. And this side. So you're going to flip the sides, you see? Just like that. and um, make sure you put the apricot jam in between two so that way the cakes uh, you know they are glued kind of all right so now we're going to put the ganache on top and unfortunately i have missed or oh, i've missed recording you know the complete covering of the ganache on the cake so please forgive me for that so i kept it in the fridge for about uh, half an hour i was in a rush but please keep it at least for four to five hours so that it sets properly all right so i just remove the bottom and i'm gonna keep it upside down you can put it either way either side it doesn't matter and now we're ready to slice this beautiful baby as you can see and uh, thank you so much for watching we wish you a wonderful eat and please do not forget to visit shuna's kitchen and farhat yummy for more recipes please visit me at aroma of zanzibar you'll find all the measurements and ingredients in the description box and on this very last page thank you